Hi there, for today's read aloud, we will be reading the story, Can We Ring the Liberty Bell? Okay, so if you've already heard the story, read the story before, then what you can do is go ahead and take a moment and think back to the story and try to remember as much as you can. And if you have not read the story yet, take a moment and use the title, Can We Ring the Liberty Bell? and the cover to make prediction. All right, if you need more time, just pause the video, but we are going to get started reading this book. What um, I'd like for you to remember is this is a narrative nonfiction, so that means it's going to, it's going, the story is going to give us information, but it sounds like a story. So please look for facts about a real topic, okay? So let's go ahead and get started reading. So I have the book in front of me because sometimes it's hard for me to see the text. So in this page right here, can we ring the Liberty Bell? We have a table of contents chapter one a visit to the liberty bell page four chapter two a bell to share the news page eight chapter three a symbol of liberty page 16 chapter four ringing for freedom page 18. so remember table of contents is a text feature and these different headings right here um, is information we'll be reading about and learning about chapter one a visit to the Liberty Bell. So this is a heading, another text feature. Today is a field trip day. Our teacher says we are going to see a famous American symbol. Melissa says, my big brother plays the symbols in band. Mr. Chen smiles. Not the instrument. Here, the word symbol means something that stands for something else. So here's what he's um, showing everybody. This is what they're going to be um, seeing. Like a heart means love, says Amira. Yes, says Mr. Chin. Can anyone name a symbol of America? The flag, says Benjamin. The bald eagle, says Simon. Good thinking, our teacher says. Today we are going to see the Liberty Bell. Liberty is another word for freedom. So here is a little fact. The Liberty Bell hangs in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. A copy of the Liberty Bell hangs in every U.S. state. Most states keep their bell in or near the state capitol building. We, we ride to the bus to Independence National Historical Park. Ranger Marcella meets us outside the Liberty Bell Center. Welcome, she says. I have a riddle for you. The Liberty Bell doesn't make a sound, so how can we help it ring? Shake it, says Thomas. No, we can't shake it, says Ranger Marcella. Then I have no idea, says Lila. Keep thinking about my riddle. I'll tell you more about the bell, our guide says. Here's another little fact. If you want to visit the Liberty Bell, you'll have to spit out your gum and candy. Sticky foods are not allowed near the bell. Remember, facts are true information. Chapter 2. A bell to share the news. Look behind me, Ranger Marcella says. During the 1700s, that building was called the Pennsylvania State House. Right here. We learned that people in Pennsylvania's government worked in the state house. Ranger Marcella says, let's talk about communication. How do we learn news today? Watch TV, says Ryan. Mr. Chen says, I check my phone. <laughs> right here. So now we're on this page. Listen to the radio, Sylvia says. Our guide asks, did people have phones, radios, or TVs in the 1700s? No, we all say. We learned that bells rang to tell people there was news. Then people went to the state house to find out what was happening. So right here's another little fact. It took 19 years to build the Pennsylvania State House. That's because the government kept running out of money to pay workers to build it. So on this page, um, 
sorry, no, on this page, how did people get news long ago? What did they do? They rang the bell, right? And then um, how do people get news today? Radio, phones, TV, just like the um, Mr. Chen and the students were saying. We follow our guide into the museum inside the Liberty Bell Center. She tells us that the State House needed a new bell in 1751. Workers in England made a bell that year, Ranger Marcella says. It arrived in Pennsylvania in 1752, but it cracked the first time it was rung. See right here, this big little crack? It cracked right away, says Jaden. Yes, it was too brittle, so workers here melted the bell down. They made a new bell with the metal, she tells us. It was hung in the state house. Right here. Old bell, or the first bell, the new bell, and then it was here in the state house. Right here, it says, I ask you to adopt the principles proclaimed by yourselves, by your revolutionary fathers, and by the old bell in Independence Hall. Frederick Douglass, 1866. So, see how they're, um, they're there, and this is a big sign that they can see, and this is what it says on the sign. Here's another fact. The Liberty Bell is made mostly of copper. It also contains tin, lead, zinc, gold, and silver. Actually, I think I had a question on this page. Why do you think the workers melted down the old bell to make the new one? On this page, sorry. What, um, why do you think the workers melted the old bell to make a new one? Give me a moment to think about it. Okay. Well, if the bell was um, too brittle, then every time they would um, ring, it was going just to continue to crack and um, get ruined and just wouldn't work after a while, right? So they used the metal that they had and made a new one. Good idea. We walk through the museum. When the bell was made, Pennsylvania was part of Great Britain, Ranger Marcella says. Many people living in America wanted their own country. They wanted to be free to make their own laws. We learned that our country's founders signed two important papers in the state house. So here they are signing the papers. The, Decla the Declaration of Independence said America wanted to be its own country. It was signed in 1776. The Constitution is a set of rules for our government. It was signed in 1787. Ranger Marcella adds, because these papers were signed in the state house, today it is called Independence Hall. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Take a look at this x-ray. Yes. Ranger Marcella says, it shows what happened to the bell in 1846. I had an x-ray when I broke my arm, says Zach. We all look at the big x-ray of the bell. We can see a crack. See that? Now on this page. The bell cracked and broke when it when it rang for George Washington's birthday. Does anyone know who that was? Do you know? <laughs> yes, he was our first president, answers Delilah. Correct. He passed away in 1799. We still remember his birthday, our guide says. The bell rang for the last time on that day in 1846. So here's another little fact. No one knows for sure why the bell cracked. It may have been rung too much for too many years. Tiny cracks had appeared before, but people were still able to ring it. After the big crack formed, the bell could not be rung again. Here's chapter three, a symbol of liberty. This is a heading, text feature. At last, we see the bell. Why do we call it the Liberty Bell? Asked Mr. Chen. Good question, Ranger Marcella says. Look closely at the top. I see the word liberty right there, says Nicholas. Yes, our guide says. It says proclaim liberty. Proclaim means to tell everyone about something. It's kind of hard to see, but it does say it right there. 
See where my finger is pointing? So proclaim means to tell everyone about freedom. We learn that people began calling the bell the Liberty Bell in 1830s. In the 1830s. Chapter 4, Ringing for Freedom. Can we ring the Liberty Bell, asked Diana. Sorry, says Ranger Marcella. Remember the Liberty Bell is broken? It doesn't ring anymore, Mia says. But your riddle said we can help it ring. How can we... How can we ring a bell that doesn't work anymore? Remember in the beginning um, of their tour, Ranger Marcella said, um, gave him a riddle. What does she say? I have a riddle for you. The Liberty Bell doesn't make a sound, so how can we help it ring? Well, Mia says, but your riddle, that doesn't make sense. How can we uh, make it ring if it doesn't even work anymore? All right, here we go. Ranger Marcella says, we ring the bell by being fair to everyone. We make sure everyone has freedom. So that was the answer to her riddle. The Liberty Bell weighs, here's another little fact. The Liberty Bell weighs 2,080 pounds. That is as much as 260 gallons of milk. It is almost four feet wide and three feet tall. A lot. <laughs> Our field trip is almost over. Oh, let me go out of the way. Our field trip is almost over. What do we say to our guide, Mr. Chen asks. Thank you, Ranger Marcella, we say together. Back at school, we hear the bell ring at the end of the day. That bell rings for your freedom from school, our teacher jokes. We all run around on the playground. It's good to be free. Here's one more little fact. Every year, relatives of the country's founders tap the Liberty Bell on July 4th. People also tap the bell in January on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. They do this to honor King's work for freedom for all people. How cool. I did not, I didn't know that. So that's something new I'm learning right there. All right. So um, that's the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed today's story. Can we ring the Liberty Bell? That was a great story. Take a moment and think of the topic. What is something that we learned? What was, what, what were we focusing on in this book? The Liberty Bell. The Liberty Bell was our topic, right? So um, I would now like you to think, okay, this story is a narrative nonfiction, meaning that um, this story is nonfiction, has real facts, real information, but it's told in a story-like way. So what is the author's purpose for writing today's story? To pers persuade you, inform you, or entertain you? Persuade. To try to get you to do, try, believe something inform when the author is trying to give you real information about a topic or entertain the author just wants you to enjoy and laugh and have a good time with the book give you a moment to think about it all right what do you think it is inform remember an area of nonfiction text stories are meant to inform the reader. You're learning real information here. There are several different facts that we read about. Um, They're giving us real information and we focused on the Liberty Bell. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's little read aloud.